So the three one victory is happy birthday Rakesh takes the uh takes the stand with mm -hmm. uh with Raptura. And obviously uh Raptura is a bit of a bit of a strange uh bit of a strange character in and of himself. I mean obviously cool person. That's not what I meant. But in terms of the weaponry, you don't often see people go with the sloshing machine. You didn't see him stick with it. See them stick with it as much as you saw Rakesh kinda pull through with the sloshing machine. And now you have him uh, going with the Explosher. I know he's been experimenting with some other weaponry. It's going to be a it's going to be a different kind of team with him, especially alongside that. So we kind of know that he's going to go with the Splatter Shot Pro. Mm -hmm. That's been consistent uh, theme of his, alongside uh, people that are known at the at the lab like Pixely and a relative new, I, I guess Eris as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, Sloshing Machine, especially uh, Kenza Machine, has actually been very much entrenched in the meta for maybe a good month maybe two yeah um especially with the fizzy bomb just about anything that runs a fizzy bomb is going to be meta that's been such a game changer over the past couple of weeks and now that's one of those mm -hmm. things that it's not necessarily intuitive when you're after having played that game for about a year or so but then you start to get used to it you start getting used to the mechanics of it and you realize how much that thing can do it is amazing to see how the fizzy bomb has taken over the game, and yeah, you can definitely see that uh, it's one of those things that can carry a weapon like the sloshing machine into just a little bit more prevalence. Well, the sloshing machine, um, when they up, they they upped its hits buff. They upped its hitbox is ooh, I can't speak right now. It's, it's hitbox. I can't got speak an ever. Awful, yeah, <laughs> it got an awful lot larger. Yeah, and um, since that. You can aim almost three meters to the right of someone and still clip them with your shot. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and and basically, <laughs> it's been that combined with fizzy bombs. Why people run fizzy bombs is actually because they'll combine it with chip damage from other weapons. They'll run burst bombs. They'll run explosher a lot. They'll run MPU for weapons that do have damage up on them. And... It, it, uh, it essentially becomes everybody's constantly damaged. So all these weapons and all these burst subs that are doing damage, it all just adds up. And it adds up so quickly that you really can't hold defensively. This was in response to a meta that actually was very backline heavy. You were seeing double backline comps. And mm -hmm. it was really built around knocking people out of position in power positions. And... Um, nowadays, it's been so entrenched that we're seeing Fizzy Bomb really more focused lately on frontline play as well. Um, it's been pretty cool to watch. It's making it a more aggressive game, mm -hmm. generally speaking, and that is one of those things that uh, has not been, uh, I don't think it's been lost on anyone that watches Splatoon on a regular basis, and certainly not on uh, Inksplat TV, where you got to commentate a little bit. That was really cool. Oh, yeah, I, com I commentate for Ink TV every now and again. Yeah, dude, hey, hey man, honestly, big fan of your work, but... The uh, one thing that I have noticed, at, at least as of late, just generally speaking, is the fact that, yeah, you do see a little bit more of the fizzy bomb. But then again, as, as things change, the more they stay the same, you're still seeing a lot of inkjet. You're still seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, with the, the tenor missiles to counteract the sort of stingrays and all that sort of stuff, whatever. The, the standard stuff that's been around forever, the stingray, the inkjet, whatever. The more the more things change, the more they stay the same. But then again, it just kind of goes to show how well built that they are. It's like the inkjet can redefine itself. The inkjet can be a uh, just as good as anything else, no matter what the game mode is, no matter what the meta is. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I always found that interesting, just how even with the new additions of weapons, even with the new additions of subs, just how effective these mainstays of the meta have always been and will continue to be. Absolutely. I mean, you see a lot of teams, however, there is no real defined meta in Splatoon. A lot of the top teams in Japan and in the Western scene are very much unconventional. Just actually, just take a look at uh, Loki Esports, for instance. I mean, they run Arashi on Hammer, and the Hammer is his main weapon. The Ultra Stamp is his main weapon. Mm. So he's spending time sharking, building up his special, and waiting for a frontline aggro situation where he can use that stamp. Um, look at my team um, from the Inkling Open. We're in the top eight right now as well. We mm. run an Ink Brush. We run a Junior. Um, you know, very much two weapons that most consider low tier or bottom tier. Yeah. But 
if you can build around the strategies that make them work well, then everything, almost everything, I will say, I mean, GooTuber, almost everything is viable in this game. Yeah. It's that well balanced. You talk, you talk about how the more things change, the more they stay the same. The GooTuber is still trash. It's amazing. <laughs> like, I love that. But uh, as we're getting set here between uh, this game between uh, Team Rapture, happy birthday, Rakesh, I guess we should say, because it is his birthday. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to him. So, uh, but I, I think, like, having a, uh, saying happy birthday, Rakesh, might be a little exhausting. So we're just going to say HBR. Yeah, HBR. That works. HBR. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, definitely, I, I, I would say just when you're dealing with the, uh, a team that you're drafting off of the, uh, just like with people off of the street or people that you kind of know cursor in a cursory sense, you might want to go with a more quote unquote conventional setup. So that looks like, you know, your standard, you know, you have your, your back lines, your, your midfielders and your front liners. Mm -hmm. That's you're, that you're not going to see anything too crazy, but what are you expecting exactly from uh, Rapture's team consisting of uh, Pixely and uh, and Eris and also, of course... Well, that Gun. so and Rapture are both, so. by trade, very, very aggressive midliners. Uh, they run a team that very often does not even run a backline. They are constantly just throwing themselves, throwing bodies at objectives. And what that does, teams that do that, is they throw themselves so aggressively at objective that throughout the tide of the match, you'll see just the sheer death count on both teams, the momentum of who's doing the most killing just shift because nobody is ever four down on one side. Yeah, and it's uh, it's not often that you see that. I believe the uh, the really, you don't, you can dense the scoreboard and put it at the bottom. It's uh, actually is it is it still in the way? I don't feel like it is. Okay, fair enough. Uh, either way, folks, we'd like to thank you for joining us for the uh for the Splatoon Two tournament here, the draft tournament here at the laboratory in Hapro, Pennsylvania. Once again, as you might have seen, Smash Brothers Ultimate at 5 p.m. and we are uh getting things underway for the second match of our round robin series. Here in half row for Splatoon 2. And mm -hmm. as we are waiting for Pixley to get his uh, set up, to get his stuff set up, uh, Pixley definitely one of the one of the more familiar faces that we have here at the laboratory. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, exactly what he goes with. But uh, at the same time, I feel like he'll he'd just stick with his usual more than anything else where he's... Uh, He's very close range. He's very in your face. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they're really building I'm, off I'm aggression. Sorry, I'm, I'm, reading, I'm reading chat. I had no idea. Well, here we go <laughs> on Gosh. Splat Zone Snapper Canal. We see actually a pretty unconventional comp already from Baki's team. You've got a junior and a jet squelcher. They've got some Tides of Sigma in there. But it's, hey. it's coupled up a double midline versus... What is essentially a no backline team, all aggression. And now Baki getting taken to task by Pixely. Absolutely. With the rapid blast. They're going to feed off of the aggression of any team that they fight. Pixely right here just waiting on him to walk up. He was already damaged, so he's going to go ahead and get that pick. Now they have to push up aggressively themselves, make sure that their backline never gets situated, Ooh. just make sure they toss that chip damage. That's exactly what a rapid is good for and you'll see right here they're just going to push up so hard and make sure that they never go four down and as long as they don't go four down they will not lose their push that who that counter right there on the inkjet so important so critical that baller beautiful counter job right there so now pixely Doing a pretty decent job with that Kensa Rapid Blast, and you were talking about the prevalence of the Fizzy Bomb. Absolutely. It's uh, definitely coming into play here. MKV going to get taken out in the middle, and X, I mean, looks like he's hiding for his life, but he's in a bad situation. He'll need to get out of it, and that's so is going to escort him out of it uh, personally with the blaster. He's going to carry MKV 13 out along with him, the Ab chins. With that, uh, with that jet squelcher. Absolutely, they're running out of time here. They have 30 seconds left. Ooh. That pick absolutely critical. They're able to get the zone, 
but such an aggressive team, they always have a flank right behind them. Rapture with the kill on the back line. Now that's going to be absolutely huge here because that knocking out the back line right there is essentially going to let them drop zone again if they don't. Ooh, right there, Chins is able to get right back in it pretty quickly. I stand corrected. Yeah, it's all good, but they're letting uh, they're letting they're letting the green team get back just a little too easily. Chins, not a. Uh, I mean, they they are playing a relatively aggressive game, hunting down Raptura with that stingray for a three to two on the field. But they're not necessarily coordinated enough to really hold the zone. They can get it for a little bit of time, but uh, it's holding it is an entirely different question. Mm -hmm, the back line getting them back in very well, making sure that he doesn't go down. The flanks not being too common from such an aggressive team on the other end, which is actually pretty unusual right here. Those flanks are going to be important. Two down right Ooh, there. That's a fizzy bomb. That's a fizzy bomb. Welcome Ooh. to the meta. Yeah, holy smokes, and Chin's getting pushed back. He had nowhere to go. That's so uh, with the blaster. Will eventually get taken out by Baki. But, I mean, all you can do is even it up at this point. And uh, Team Blue playing catch-up. MKV13 looking to change the turn the tides, and he Ooh, will nice. do so by splatting Eris. But he gets taken out by Pixely again with that rapid blaster. So effective. Yeah, they're able to stall it just enough to stay in the game right there. They're actually getting a little bit desperate. They only have five seconds left to work with. We are about to hit a KO punch for Raptura. Yeah, and Raptura and company, Team, uh, team HBR, doing their work with the knockout punch. And you could tell, I mean, just chipping away and not even chipping, more like just taking out the jackhammer and sawing every last piece of will out of Team Baki. 25 kills combined with Raptura and that's so. And that's, well, that seemed to be the difference just because they could not get those numbers forward, could Team Baki. Absolutely. It was going to be, it, it was going to be absolutely crucial for uh, Chins and Pixley and, and Eris and all of them, Baki, they needed to get a full wipe or they were never going to stop the tide of bodies being thrown at the objective by that so and Rapture's team right there. If they didn't get that full wipe, you saw it. They were never able for that entire match able to stop their slow push. Yeah, and that's uh, that's eventually what wound up being the difference. They, had the, they knew they had the advantage in terms of numbers, in terms of uh, the points on the board, mm -hmm. and they played like it. They were not afraid. They weren't sitting back, resting on their laurels. They knew that they had the lead, and they were playing with that confidence, with that sort of braggadocio, and eventually uh, came back to bite Team Baki in a big way and put that big 1-0 on the board for Happy Birthday Rakesh. So as we approach Clam Blitz for game number two at Humpback Pump Track, uh, one of those stages that, I mean, it has remained the same, but the game has changed around it. And uh, it's taken on a, well, in my opinion, a whole new life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Clam Blitz is a mode that relies even more on team play. You're, you might see a team like that so in Rapture's actually struggle a little bit here because they rely more on aggression and more on solo 1v1s coming out in their favor than they do team play. Baki's team actually right here with proper shot calling and proper coordination, this could be their forte right here because they're playing a little bit more passive. They're, they're you know, if I was them, I'd say, all right, I'm gonna hang back. I'm going to just make sure that I don't die because eventually we're going to paint enough and that so is going to overextend and we can solo pick him and gang up on him and we'll have a, a 4v3 situation every single time. It's going to be super important for them to make sure that they shut down that so. However, the name of the game is going to be patience and that's never easy to exercise, especially when you're down by a score of zero to one, but it's something that they're going to have to exercise here. You see the Nautilus being broken out on their side alongside the crack on splat roller to complement the Kensa Rapid Blaster and the Splatter Shot Junior. And over on the, uh, and over on the opposing side, they're going to be opposed by the Clash Blaster, Neo, which gets the kill by that so. I mean, that blaster, man, oh, man. Mm -hmm. Chin's getting taken out as well. So that's two kills already for that so. 
to compliment him is that under is that uh, excuse me the hero umbrella. Yeah, if you're Zappity actually five and the Kensa sloshing machine. Now this is a really interesting pick with the Clash Blaster right here. You saw how he was actually hugging the ledges and punishing the ledges. Very very important for the Clash Blaster to do on this map. As long as he stays close to the ledges, then he's going to be all right. Oh, Baki was biding his time looking for the kill, but maybe not being patient enough. Got a little <coughs> got a little antsy. Absolutely. Baller coming out from Baki. So this aggressive situation could be huge. He's going to get another pick. Oh, it's stolen from him right there. But they have a 3v3 situation, but they have the pressure on the board. Eris coming around. He might be able to get it in, but he's going to be forced to fall back. They're waiting with the armor. Oh, but he walks into a deluge of purple ink and X and company doing well to pick up that kill. And that Splattershot Jr., uh, Proven to be just as effective in uh, in his hands, perhaps. Maybe not just as effective as in Muddy's hands, let's be real. But it's uh, still pretty darn good. And indeed, it will let uh, Team Purple get some points on the board. MKV looking to add to Ooh. that score. He will not be successful. Raptura will hold the line. But the damage has been done, Astro. Absolutely. They were able to counter push. You know, only one power clam in, so it's still anybody's second. game. They've got a large push. My. Two clams in. The body's being thrown at objective, and they just aren't going down. Super important flank right there, and they're able to get a massive Man. push all the way down to 36, and they're not done. The green tsunami descended upon Team Baki, and what else could they do but get wiped out? 24 ticks to go for Team Happy Birthday Rakesh. And now make that 15, 85 points on the board. And just like that, before you could even say stay fresh, that's a whole lead gone and a big lead being piled up for HBR. Absolutely, but Baki's team now has advantage as long as they played their card right. They have clam advantage at the moment. And if they're patient enough, they can put together a large push Ooh, this oh. overextending right here. The Inkjet is going to disable their power clam, so they can't push right here during this. This pick has to come out from the Inkjet, and it does. This might be a push right here. Oh, and the barrier is broken. However, no uh, advantage mm. to be taken here. They are on the they are on the opposing team like white on rice. Our team happy birthday, Rakesh. Pixely doing the initial damage after the Inkjet, but not before the barrier was broken. It will be good to take 10 points off of the board. Oh my! And yeah, that's a that's a big old bomb to the face, that torpedo. Eris will come in with a counter push just to knock out a little bit of that penalty with a minute and 30 left to go. They're almost ready for a large push themselves. That's oh, they're so cutting in on the penalty! They're out! And it's all the way down to 11, so it's a push that does turn out to be productive. <coughs> 8, 5, 2, oh. and they're able to just hold on. My, oh my, they were one clam away from a knockout blow, and you saw the clam on the screen. If that knockout hadn't come when it did, Astro, we would be talking about what they would have to do for game number three in order to prevent another KO. But that's so. And company, they're going to have to make their way back through and get another push if they want that KO victory. Less than a minute left. Hope uh, starting to run out for Team Baki. Ooh, three Ooh. down on the side of Team Baki. That's going to be huge. 40 seconds left to go. That's so team. It, happy birthday. Oh my. <laughs> They're going to go ahead and KO it easily. And that's going to be a commanding game. Indeed, a knockout victory and a convincing one at that mm -hmm. at Humpback Pump Track. And you can see, I mean, Baki maybe uh, sitting back and waiting just a little bit too much, Team Baki. Chin's doing well to get 11 kills, but that's so leading the way with that Clash Blaster Neo. And you can see that, yeah, aggression, definitely the name of the game with, uh, with Happy Birthday Rakesh. But Team Baki, it seems like they can't do enough about it in order to counter. Yeah, you know, you really have to shut down their aggression, so they really needed to shut down that so right there. If they're able to shut down that so right there, then they are effectively able to shut down their aggression. They need to run more paint. They were outpainted the entire match. We're down to basics here. Shut down their best player, and they'll be all right. Yeah, no, I mean, if we were just playing straight up turf war, perhaps the, perhaps the, uh, the key 
would have been a little bit more clear, but ultimately you need that ink in order to be able to move. And it just seemed like Baki was locked up. Team Baki was locked up with uh, nowhere to go, allowing HBR to have their way with the map and thus have their way with the objective. And now as we approach tower control in game number three, especially at Sturgeon Shipyard, I mean, having, uh, having control of the ground is going to be even more crucial. Yeah, and you know, this is a map that normally you wouldn't always see a Stingray on, not all the time because of the different elevation changes that make rays a little bit less effective. But this time, these teams are a little bit more conventional. You know, um, the team Happy Birthday, like, H HBR. I'll, let's just, it's let's Happy just Birthday, yeah. Rakesh. We have nothing ha yeah. wrong with saying that. HBR. Just, yeah. Happy Birthday, Rakesh, right here. They might be the ones to be a little bit more unconventional here. They'll definitely be the ones to not run Stingray right here. Uh, Baki's team... They're by the book right here, and they have been by the book. They're running a back line, a mid line, and a front line, and they're relying on their back line to get them back in, but they're also relying on their back line to get them kills. Unfortunately, that is their issue, but with the Stingray coming out to shut down whatever tower pushes that Happy Birthday Rakesh actually bring out, they might be able to play the defensive game. There's only one way to know for sure. Either way, Team Baki is down 2-0. They're going to have to get some form of victory by hook or by crook at Sturgeon Shipyard. We'll have to see. He's going to be running the Kensa Splattershot Pro as well as a custom jet squelcher. It looked like, indeed, that is the case mm -hmm. to go along with the Splattershot Junior and the tri Slosher Niveau. Yeah, it looks like once again, happy birthday, Rakesh, just relying on chip damage they've got an undercover brella paired up with that sir on the clash blaster right there that's an absolutely deadly combo right there raptura i mean that thing it's basically like a sawed off shotgun that thing it's it's how it feels and how it acts and uh having to go up against that thing i can never quite get a, a feel for how it's supposed to work but Nonetheless, the Clash Blaster Neo being employed as well to go along with the Vanilla Splatter Shot, the original sort of chip damage weapon where you fl mm -hmm. throw out those burst bombs and uh, and let the Splatter Shot take care of the rest. Absolutely. The backline staying alive right there, bringing out the Stingray, that was important. They are able to stop it before the first checkpoint. This is a defensive game right now. This is a defensive situation. Rapture are going down again. That's two down on the side of Team HBR right there. And this is going to be the chance to push the missiles coming out from that so on the tower to try to put some pressure on, not before they get lead though. That's so going to bite his time. Yeah, you don't want to be climbing up onto the tower with a, a spot bomb sitting there. Generally speaking, Ooh. not the best idea. And now it's, the tower is going to reset. Not before the lead has been taken over. Oh, they're not done. MKV with the double, but Rapture is going to play patient and allow him to walk right up into his missile, but not before objective continues to be pushed. The down to 71, down below that, down below 70. They have to fall back, but that jump is going to possibly push it a little further. 31 points on the board. Make that, wow, it's ticking down. Why am I even gonna bother to count along with it, folks? But yeah, it is down below 50 now. And now, Team Baki pushing forward. Victory in their sights. However, they will have to be patient. It's a 2v2 right now. Yet. They have to fall back and play it safe. Let their back line get them back in. Wait for that so to overextend, which he does. They are playing patient. They're playing smart. They're playing perfect by the book. Gameplay right here in tower control. Oh. Another kill that's going to be key. They could get it below 31, that double right there by Baki. Beautiful stuff from Baki to take care of Rapture on the top with the Booyah Bomb and then let the main weapon do the rest. It will be pushed forward, the initiative. There is 70 to 21 on the board right now for Happy Birthday Rakesh. And Baki's Baki. not done, he's taking a 2v1 over there. Not necessarily the smartest decision, he's gonna fall back. Ooh, and he's gonna get the pick. Happy birthday, Rakesh, right now, having trouble dealing with the onslaught. Absolutely, they're getting a taste of their own medicine right here, though they are able, ooh, another pick, a double in mid. This is gonna open things wide up. 
so that they can go ahead and take map control back and get a push going of their own. Eris doing well to stay patient and allow that uh, and allow really uh, allow himself to take control of midfield pretty much single-handedly as we saw the uh, the super jump was coming in but engaging uh, engaging the teammate and then taking care of the super jump. Now this could be big Absolutely. for Happy Birthday Rakesh. However, they're going to need more than just uh, solo uh, solo expertise here. They're going to need uh, they're going to need something special in order to take the lead away, just because of how the uh, the map is laid out. Being able to get to uh, being able to get the 70 points on the board was uh, was an accomplishment in and of itself, and it took a lot of time. The question is. Do they have the time remaining as we have a minute left? Well, they're down past. Ooh, they're all the way oh down my. to 50. This push could be it. The Stingray coming out and stalling them just enough, but they've got three on tower. Wait, Ooh. they've taken the lead! They've all taken the, way the down lead! To 29. And a team wipe will in fact come through, but man, oh man, was that ever consequential. Happy birthday, Rakesh, indeed. The candles might have been blown out on Team Baki's hopes. Oh, and that's two down right there on Baki's team. With only 25 seconds left to go, they are facing a 2v3, and they, ooh, they get two down on Happy Birthday Rakesh. If they're able to put themselves together and charge specials fast enough, they have special advantage. This is going to be a large push unless a key kill comes out. Here comes the Ray. They're putting the pressure on. Booyah Bomb comes out. This is absolutely massive. Oh, he gets the kill. Two down. The push coming through. Will it be enough? No. In the overtime, it will not. They retake the tower. And happy birthday, Rakesh steals it away. And they will win it by the score of three to nil. You know, they just threw bodies. They all piled themselves on tower all at once right there at the counter and just waited and hoped that they would just have enough people on tower by the end of the onslaught that they would just be able to eke out the lead and they're able to do it. And you saw Baki, I mean, a wonderful effort getting 20 splats leading the game and ultimately that was not enough. It will be happy birthday Rakesh uh, taking it 3-0. Team Baki, unfortunately, going out of this tournament winless not without leaving us some incredibly good gameplay. Oh yeah, that last match especially, as close as it gets. Yeah, so uh, that is going to be how it ends for Team Baki going 0-2. And uh, happy birthday Rakesh going to take on your team, Team Ace, and uh, what will ultimately decide the uh, championship here at Switch versus at the Laboratory. Uh, what do you think your strategy is going to be going into this match? Well, we're going to need to shut down that, so he's going to be aggressive. He's going to live under those ledges right there, so we can't run something a little bit more passive. We can't run double backline. We may have to rely on rain to rain him out of those ledges. We may have to rely on blast weapons of our own to really just punish him sitting under there. He likes to camp out those ledges a lot, and he was using them to his advantage with the class blaster incredibly well. Well, I, I would wish you the best of luck, but something tells me you don't need luck, Astro. Well, I'm going to do my best. Absolutely. Uh, good job to you, and we will see how it plays out as uh, Happy Birthday Rakesh takes on Team Ace here at Switch versus at the Laboratory to determine the champions here at this uh, every mo this monthly Saturday tournament here in Hatboro. So, folks, once again, thank you for joining us here at twitch.tv slash bros underscore calamity. I'm BC East, the announcer, rocking out with you here. And uh, once again, every fourth Saturday of the month, you can join us right here for some Tune 2 action, as well as a little bit of, uh, you know, you, 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 we got everything here at Switch versus at the Laboratory. We got a little bit of Mario Kart. We got a little bit of Mario Tennis Aces. We got some Nippon Marathon action coming through. Got some Super Mario Party. You know, it's a nice little, it's a, it, it can be a casual atmosphere, but then we get competitive with the Splatoon and the Smash Brothers Ultimate. That's how we do. We got a little something for everyone. And Moosh, I'm going to ask you one time, you know how we do, hit them with the ad slides. Go ahead and follow us on all forms of social media for all the information that you could ever ask for about the laboratory here in Hatboro, Pennsylvania. You can go ahead and follow us on Instagram at the gaming lab underscore. Go ahead and hit us up on our YouTube channel at Bros Calamity, youtube.com slash Bros Calamity, at Bros underscore Calamity on Twitter for all the information, all the updates that you need. 
for your boys here in Hatboro. And of course, Facebook.com slash The Gaming Lab. Hey, if you're checking us out on the VOD channel already, go ahead and go over to Twitch.tv slash Bros underscore Calamity and check out every single monthly tournament that happens here, whether it be for Smash Ultimate or for Splatoon or for whatever the case may be, you know it goes down here in Hatboro. And that's our schedule, folks. Every single Friday from out of here at the laboratory, every single Friday, we've got it going down on twitch.tv slash class tournaments where we run our weekly tournament. That's code name bears happening from out of here. And uh, the schedule for the rest of the week, we have our good friends uh, holding it down, whether it be uh, our good friend Flygon over in Phoenixville. We got Burr organizing stuff over at Temple. We have Kyrie on the weekends at Disguiser Gaming Lounge. And, of course, our good friend Kyle McFarland over at a local host over in Northern Liberty. It's just a few blocks from, uh, from the distinguished Boating High School of International Affairs. And I'm not just saying that because I went there. I promise you. Either way, folks, that's our schedule here at the Laboratory. Every single Tuesday, we have Smash at the Laboratory Tuesdays. That's Smash 64, that's Melee, that's Rivals of Aether. we got it all going on. We have a little bit of Smash Ultimate going on there, too. Every single Thursday is our FGC event, the FGC Alchemy Lab, where we have Blaze Blue Cross Tag, Dragon Ball Fighters, Street Fighter, Tekken. So we've got a little bit of Soul Calibur, too. But it's a very Tekken-heavy, very Blaze Blue-heavy crowd. A little bit of Dragon Ball Fighters as well. We have one of the best Dragon Ball Fighters uh, players in America, I would wager coming through here on the regular and of course that's our weekly uh, our uh, monthly events happening and of course you are not going to want to miss keystone ultimate happening right here april 20th and we have a smash ultimate bracket we have singles we have doubles we in fact are going to be introducing a new format philly street fights that's 3v3 squad strike 200 stamina you ain't going to want to miss it. It's going to be experience unlike any other happening here at Keystone Ultimate. That's Saturday, April 20th, 2019. And it's going to be right here. Twitch.tv slash bros underscore calamity.